Hey people, this is Jake. So, looking out the window right now, the sky is blue, the sun is shining, the grass is even green, and kind of yellow, but it, no, it's pretty, pretty, anyway, it's a beautiful day outside. I heard birds chirping. I saw a butterfly. Actually, that might be a lot. Anyway, it's a great day, so I thought it would be a good idea to talk about death, because why not? So, yeah, I mean, this is a Percy Jackson YouTube channel, so obviously it's not just about death uh, broadly in general, because really, who understands death anyway? We are talking about death in the Percy Jackson universe. So obviously, if you haven't read the books, Heroes of Olympus included, you might not want to listen to this. Uh, but seeing as this is a Percy Jackson YouTube channel, and you are here, I'm assuming you've read the books. But not and you just like spoilers and stay tuned now being a Percy Jackson nerd I hear a lot of complaints regarding the fans about good old Uncle Rick a lot of them are like oh my gosh Rick is such a troll he kills everybody I'm so sad if Rick kills this dude I'm gonna riot yada 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 and yeah I mean people die in these books it sucks but I just want to ask you people a simple question. Have you watched Game of Thrones? Because if you have, you would have realized that things could be a lot worse. I'm talking a lot. A lot worse. Okay, guys, this is a war. You know, these guys go through wars. They're fighting monsters all the time. They're fighting some titans. They're fighting some giants. They're even fighting some demigods. And let me ask you, how many main people have actually died? Now, you probably just said to yourself, Jake, a lot of people have died. That's how many people. A lot. But I said main people. Now, let me go through my list of main people with you. Percy Jackson, he's still kicking. Annabeth Chase, she's still kicking. Grover Underwood, yes, he is main, Rick. Put him in the, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Grover Underwood is still kicking. Uh, Piper McLean, still kicking. Frank Zhang, or Zhang, how do you pronounce his name, is still kicking. Uh, Leo, he's, <laughs> yeah, okay, now he's, he did die. Uh, he, okay, I'll give you that. But he did come back to life, so it really doesn't count. Is this a Marvel movie? I mean, can someone tell someone that? If you kill him, it's really not that significant if they're back like two seconds. Okay, whatever. But he's still alive, is my point. So, yeah, guys, basically my point is that in the sake of reality, in the sake of sincere, impactful, oh my gosh, did that really happen? I'm emotionally wrecked right now. I wish more people would have actually died, which sounds really awful. And uh, kind of hypocritical because at the same time, I'm glad they did it. But my point being here is that I, I know this world is mythical and it's fictional and it's not real in like the slightest degree. But there are things that help it feel more real. There are things that help you connect with a story and its characters. And I feel like death is one of those things. Because in reality, if you're fighting a war, you're constantly, constantly putting yourself into danger, you're going to die. And I know these guys are like the best in the business, uh, like the seven demigods, they're like the best in the business. And so yeah, it's going to be hard to kill them. But throughout the expanse of this story, like just look at back at Percy's first few, first few lines. It's talking about how dangerous it is. It's talking about how how much it sucks to be a demigod, how you die early. Well, these guys have gone through all that, and they're still going, which is impressive, and it's cool. And am I? is it something I'm really, really upset about? I mean, not really, because I like them. But it's just one of those things, like, some of my favorite shows have people dying all the time, and it's something that keeps you on your toes. It's something that keeps you emotionally attached and, and like, you know, just aware for example, I brought up Game of Thrones. There's this quote by George R. R. Martin, who is the uh, writer, author of Game of Thrones. And this quote, he's saying, this isn't exact, but basically, we've all watched those movies 
where the hero is surrounded by 20 people. But are we really afraid? No, because he's the hero. And in his books, he wants you to be afraid because there are people that actually die in these situations. Because if you're looking at real life, no matter how good of a fighter you are, if you're surrounded by 20 people that want to kill you, normally you're gonna die. But in all honesty, if we're looking back in the Heroes of Olympus series, or Percy Jackson, whatever, there are moments, take the House of Hades, for example. They're in the House of Hades. They're surrounded by a butt-ton of monsters beyond measure. Okay, we're talking way more than 20. Now, I want to ask you genuinely, were you afraid that any of them were going to die? Not like, oh man, it might happen, but like genuinely, you think someone's going to die here. If you said yes, okay, I guess that just kind of ruins my whole argument. But I wasn't, because it never happens. Because yes, Rick will kill off characters. Luke Castellan, Charles Beckendorf, Bianca D'Angelo, Selena Vuregaard. Yeah, it sucks that these people died. But are they the main head honcho people that will completely turn this story sideways if they die? No. They're not really expendable but in a kind of sadistic way, they kind of are. So that's where I'm just wishing that in the sake of reality, in the sake of legitimate fear that I feel really goes well with books and movies and shows, whatever, I do kind of wish that Rick would have been willing to at least killed somebody in a hypocritical way, you know, because at the same time, I'm glad he didn't. But... I just feel like that would have made it more realistic and more impactful in the end and ultimately made the story better. Because if you got a fictional story and you're just kind of in a heap of crying tears afterward, you know the story did its job. It super emotionally impacted you. And death is one of the things, one of the realistic war-like things in the story that can do that to you. So I just think it would have made the story better. Now, I am aware of a very simple point that can be made here, and that is the fact that Percy Jackson and the Olympians is designed, the target audience is 12 year olds. I know not every, <laughs> everyone is a 12 year old that reads it, but I know that is the target audience. So to compare it to Game of Thrones is a little bit of a long shot because yeah, the target audience for Game of Thrones is a little higher, just a, a little bit. So yeah, I, I can see why it would be weird if Rick just like, killed every main guy. Um, I do get that. But I've just, I'm a fan of like sacrifice in books that are long lasting. Like Leo, he makes a sacrifice. He does die. But is it long lasting? No. He's back to life like a chapter later. And I love Leo. And I am glad he's in the books right now. So like I said, this is kind of hypocritical. But I just feel like when you have those sacrificial when you have those endings to a character, it's just something that is a completely epic ending that you really can't mess with. Like, let's say Leo's dead right now, and he's just saying, oh man, like that guy sacrificed and gave it all, and now he's in Elysium right now. That guy is awesome. And we still do say he's awesome, but I just feel like the impact level is so much higher if he actually did stay dead. Yeah, so you guys are probably Thinking of a quote right now that Cronus says to Nico in The Last Olympian, which is, do you love death so much that you wish to experience it? I realize you guys probably want to kill me right now. I just want to make it clear that I'm not some, like, death nut that just wants everyone to drop off, you know, the face of the planet. Uh, but like I said, it's just something that makes things feel more real. It's just something that leaves you emotionally impacted. And I just, that's the, one of the things I love about fiction is that it's, it's not real. And we all know it's not real, but sometimes at the end, it can just leave you like messed up. And it can leave you just completely just in a loop for a while. And I love it when TV shows and books and everything does that. And I'm not saying you have to have death to do that. PC don't. There's a lot of, Percy Jackson does do that. Uh, it does, throw you in an emotional loop without doing those things, uh, which is part of the reason it's so good. But I just feel like that's an element 
that in a war story should be there that does that as well but these are still my favorite books uh i love these books and going back would i really change anything probably not so please don't kill me guys uh anyway if you feel the same way or if you feel differently and you want to yell at me in the comments then go ahead i hope you guys enjoyed this video <laughs> and uh have a good day or night wherever you are